Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the 12th video of our newly created technical series called ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, we have worked on three different use cases of business rules and I've shown you each of this uh, use case, how you can implement it inside of your ServiceNow Developer instance. And also I have explained all the steps that I performed in, in the scripting, right? So if you have any doubt watching that video, again, you can ask me in the comment section. I think many people has already asked different questions and I'm trying to answer them. But what I'm trying to say is that the more you practice those use cases, not only those three use cases, definitely I will come with more use cases uh, in the future videos I've already told. And also there would be more videos for the members. But what I'm trying to say is that the more you practice those use cases, this is all based on real scenario what I try to give, right? Uh, then it would give you confidence to become a developer, right? Because trust me, when you'll become a ServiceNow developer, when, we, when you'll work for a client, then every day you will deal with business rules, client scripts, script includes, all those important things. So again, if you missed that video, don't worry, I'm going to put the link in the description. Also, you can find the link here on your screen, right? So let's see what we are going to learn from today's video. So today we are going to learn about another very, very powerful server-side scripting in ServiceNow and that will help us a lot. Again, this is something that you are going to use a lot while, while solving the problems for the client, right? So today we are going to learn about script include, okay? So we will see what is script include, then how script include works. Uh, types of script includes what are the different types available and also we will explore script include in the service now PDI how it is working I mean how you can create a record what are the fields and how they work so each and every details I will share with you today so make sure you watch the full video to clear the concept and again and feel free to ask me any question in the comment section okay so let's start the class so what is script include so it stores reusable JavaScript code that runs on the server. Now, here's a catch. This reusable is very, very important. And one of the main reason that you're going to use script include because you can reuse it. Okay. It seems like script include is a place or is a kind of a container where you are storing your code, your JavaScript code. Okay. You are putting different functions, calling different methods using all server side scripting and then from different other scripting places you are calling them calling this method and functions right so that's the main idea of script include but again we will understand in a more better way more clear way okay so this is the first point the second point is that in a single script include record so like business rule and client script you create a record right in the client script form view or the business rule form view right so here also in script include you will create a record in the script include form and there you can store, like I was saying, multiple JavaScript functions and methods. You can store there. Okay. Like I said, it's like a container. Now, there's a very important thing like in business rule or client script, UI policy, all those things, we actually need to mention a trigger condition, right? Like for, for an example, like when this business rule will call. So we put some filter condition and also like uh, before, after, async, right? Also we have like insert, update, right? Same we have in the client script in the four different type of client script on change, on form load, right? Same goes for the UI policy. We have to mention conditions. But in script include, we don't need to mention a trigger condition because it doesn't work in this way. So script include never just starts automatically you have to call script include from different places. So it is getting called from other scripting location. That means you can call a script include from a business rule. You can call a script include from client script, from UI policy, from UI action, and many other scripting places that we will discover uh, more in upcoming videos, right? But what I'm trying to say is that in script include, there is no trigger condition. From other scripting location, you have to call the script include. And how you can call each and every details and even in the practically we will see all this stuff right so here is a catch you can see script include also can be called from client script right this is very interesting so again this is this would be an example where i'll show you glide ajax 
it will be an example that how you can call uh, server data from client right we have already learned two of the methods that is the g underscore scratchpad and get reference now this is the one we are going to run about the glide ajax um, not today but in upcoming videos for sure okay so again so if i try to complete all of this script include things in one video then it would become very uh, long video and you won't i don't want to make you feel bored very honestly okay now only server side api can be used inside of the script include i mentioned that script include can be called from the client side also like i mentioned client script here but whatever the code you are going to write inside of script include so there you can only use server side api because it's a server side scripting right script include is the example of server side scripting so so in the javascript code you can only call the server side api like glide system glide record all these things we can use it inside of the uh, script include okay but it can be called from the client script but that doesn't mean that you can use client script inside of script include remember that very important point inside of script include you can only write server side script code okay server you can use server side api right i hope you get a idea of what script include is but now we will see how script include works so but we have understood that we will write some code in the script include we will mention some function uh, we will use uh, server side api then how it will work actually so first it is getting called so like i said script include never triggers or never starts working automatically so you have to call it so first it is getting called it receives some data from the clock calling script like i said in a script include you define a function and there you maybe assign two parameters right and then you are doing some uh, code doing some glide record and those kind of stuff and you are returning some value now like i said when you mention two parameters so you need to get the parameters value right so that's the second point here it receives some data from the calling script which goes to the parameter and then the code executes it executes the code and then it returns the value to the calling script that's how the script include works and again you can understand by reading this that maybe you want to write some complex things inside of the business tool so there would be a, so there would be many lines of code it will happen you can mention all this code in a different function or maybe two or three function inside of a script include then you are calling them from the business tool you are just passing the value and script include is receiving the value executing the code and giving you back the result that's it but don't worry when we will work with script include different type of script include you will understand how it is actually working okay now remember script include can be available either from server side or from client side so if you are writing a script include that can either be available from server side or either it can available from client side it cannot be available for the both section right i'll show you what i mean by that when we will explore the script include uh, you know form all right now types of script include so what are the types available for script include let's see that uh, first one is the on demand or the classless function okay so where actually you define a function and then this function gets called from the server side scripting now for the on demand script include it can only gets called from a server end i mean server side scripting so you cannot call from a client end like you cannot call uh, the on demand script include from client script or from ui policy you have to call it from a server side like business rules ui actions you can call them next is the define a new class so you can create a script include by define defining a new class also right and that is the one of the most popular one you would see that i will show you right so define a new class where you are defining a class and the benefits of it is like you can call it from the server end and you can from call it from the client end from both the area okay that is very very important and finally the third type of script include is the extend an existing class so there are already some class has been you know out of the box has been developed by the service now developer the real developer again so uh, and we can call we can extend those class so that we can use the benefits of the of those class uh, different methods so you understand like extending a class means you are already using the benefits of the existing class and also you are trying to apply your new logic also right so these are the things now i hope you got an idea about it so let's clear the concept let's give you more clear idea uh, by going in my pdi and i'll show you how this uh, script include form is working okay so i'm in my personal developer instance and now i will go to the script include so i'll go to the all section and from here i'll search i will search for script include 
so under uh, system definition this is the script includes and uh, if you open it in your developer instance you would be able to see there are many out of the box script include is already there you can see 3000 uh, 359 okay so i will go to i'll try to create a new script include so that i can show you the script include forms how it works but don't worry uh, the three different types that we have learned today uh, about script include each and every type i will explain you uh, and also i will show you with the help of practical example in my pdi okay make sure you watch the upcoming video also that should be very very important for script include Okay, so now this is the form of script include. You see that if you compare this form with a client script form or a business rule form, you will find very less information uh, that we need to put here, right? Because the reason is because we do not have a trigger condition. So we don't need to mention a condition where it is getting triggered because it's all that you are going to write script here and it will get called from other scripting place. Okay, now you have to remember this thing is very important i mean the name of the script include why it is important so maybe i will uh, type maybe uh, take with pre so that's the name of the script include now see the good thing if i tab press tab you can see so many things has been created first you can see there is a field called api name which has already been generated now it is very very important so you can see the api name actually generates based on the application you are logged in that is your current application scope which is the global it is showing right now and then that name of the script include so the api name would be global dot with free so if you want to access this particular script include from any other scope in that such scenario you need to use the api name you need to call the script include with the help of the api name that is very very important uh, definitely we will see those advanced things when we will understand about scope and all those things definitely i'll show you some use cases but what I try to say is that this name is very, very important and not only on the API and the name or the application, but there are some other things that has already been generated that you can see. So there is already a class has been created. So you can see where take with free equal to class dot create. So that has create a new class. Again, I believe you have the understanding of class objects, all those stuff, because that has already been discussed in my JavaScript service now video. So if you have any confusion, again, go and watch it out. We can see there is a class already being created and we are initializing a function and the type is take with free. That is again, the name of the script include, right? So again, how we can, uh, how we are going to write this code or different stuff, I will show you. Okay, so that means that automatically this code will generate. So you can remove that and start from the scratch from the beginning, whatever you are going to write. So we will see all about scripting, uh, how you can write script for different types of script include in my upcoming videos. Now we have a, a field here, application appli accessible form, sorry. So this is either you can accessible this, uh, this script include from this application scope only, right? So that means that only whoever is going to have the global application working in global so in this in instance the, they are going to able to access this script include okay or you can make it available for all application scopes so that is not generally recommended by the service now also when we will deal with the you know your client project definitely will work on an application scope so that's most of the time it stores as this application scope only so that means it is only accessible for this application scope and there is an active button now here is the thing this is very, very important. This client callable checkbox, if you click on it, see the changes, you see the code has got changed. And by the name client callable, you understand that by enabling this checkbox, you are telling the script include that this is a client callable script include. I told you, right? Either a script include can be client callable or server callable. So it cannot be both server and client at the same time. So if you check it, the checkbox that means it is only applicable for the client if you uncheck it then it would only applicable for the server right so i'll check it and i will just show you you see now this is the example this is a perfect example of the last type of script include that we talked about that's the extend and existing class now you can see this is abstract ajax processor this is the name of the class I told you about the Glide Ajax, right? That we are going to use Glide Ajax to call, uh, to use the server data from client end. This class will help us to do that. So if I just right click on it and you can see there is a 
option called open definition and find reference now find reference will take you to the service now document page but open definition will open this definition of this class so just to show you quickly so this is the class you can see the name of the class script include is the abstract ajax processor and the name of the class would be always same whatever the name of the script include the class name would be same you can see abstract ajax processor so this is the class that we are calling from here so we are extending the class you can see extend object abstract ajax processor again about all these details we will see in upcoming videos don't worry on it so remember one thing that the name of the script include that you are giving and the class name okay this has to be same otherwise it won't work all right so keep remember on this okay so this is a short of an idea about the script include form so you can see there are a list of script includes available here and these are all out of the box so you can go ahead and check all those codes and different stuff but if you don't understand don't worry we will explore all of this different type of script include and we won't go with the already present one we will create our own script include and based on the use case that we will deal okay so that's going to be very very interesting in the from the next from starting next video i will try to explore different script include we will understand in a better way and we will solve it different use cases so now if you got the clear understanding of script include how it works uh, not practically with the help of scripting but at least understanding how you can create a script include uh, what are the different type of script include how it works all these things right then don't forget to hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you have any trouble any problem understanding this and don't forget to share with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people don't forget to subscribe my channel and follow me insta for more technical tips okay bye bye and take care